being approximately 6.30 and follow this meeting of the Manchester Board of Select Board uh, to order. Um, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff is here. Anne is here. John. Here. Or <laughs> <Right> there. Right. <laughs> okay. Dean, I'm sorry, I sent you to the wrong place. <laughs> um, okay. Um, are there public comments on non agenda items? Yes. Thank you. Thought first, eight blocks and lane. Um, I just wrote this down so I didn't sound um, stupid. Um, thank you, Select Board, and allowing my public comment this evening. Um, you may or may not know, but the Massachusetts Attorney General, Andrea Campbell, this lawsuit against the town of Milton, took center stage at the state's highest court today. Lawyers representing the town of Milton and the state presented the oral arguments. The case, as you know, stems from Milton's refusal to adopt zoning changes required by the law. Attorney General Campbell sued the town earlier in the year, arguing she has broad authority to enforce the statute. Milton contended the law provides only for withholding certain grants as penalty for non-compliance. As we know, the court's eventual ruling could determine whether dozens of resistant communities face legal action or can maintain current zoning without any penalty beyond the loss of state funding. The justices today pressed lawyers from both sides on the limits of state power over local zoning and the adequacy of the law's enforcement mechanisms. The court also grappled with the law's impact on local democracy, a key issue in places like Marblehead and Milton, where the voters have already rejected zoning. One of the justices, begins with a W, I can't pronounce her last name, questions suggest concerning that enforcing the MBTA Communities Act might override the democratic will of Milton's residents who exercise their voting rights to reject the zoning changes. Just some other brief takeaways from the justices, some different phrases were guidelines and normally background provisions. Some of the justices use phrases like the agency has run amok and the guidelines are improperly implemented when probing the import of the fact that the EHOLC did not utilize the procedures outlined in the state law chapter 30A, which agencies are required to follow when implementing regulations. So the question at hand is whether the guidelines are enforceable. That is what kind of came out of the law today, um, the, the court today. And with it potentially not being enforceable, the, the deadline for Milton would then not be enforceable because the deadlines for compliance are in the guidelines. And there's some suggestion that this might all go back to the EHL, so EOHLC for further evaluation and review. Unfortunately, we will have to wait for weeks for the outcome, um, possibly obviously not in time for our never, no, November 18th meeting. So my question and statement to the select board this evening is, would it behoove us as a town to get legal counsel's opinion on today's oral arguments? and potentially send a letter to the Attorney General to ask for an extension of our application and compliance to the state until we hear FJC's ruling on the legality of 40A. With many communities not complying at this point and delaying town votes, why wouldn't we wait as a community to vote on this law, possibly uh, for spring town meeting? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have heard you. It's not on our agenda, so we really can't talk about it. That's that's why I could speak about it because it wasn't on your agenda. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, the chairman's report. Um, for those of you who have dialed in, hoping to hear about one spy rock hill because you haven't checked the agenda. That has been put off for another month, for another two weeks, um, while we are waiting for some legal information. Um, we have on um, our also on our agenda a harbor management plan task force update, um, and unfortunately, the chair of the harbor management plan task force is in another meeting now. We have in front of us. We have received a letter from Bion um, describing the process that they are going through. And I suggest that we wait until we can talk to the chair about what the goal is, what the desired outcome, what the possible outcomes are. 
um, rather than spending a lot of time on it tonight. So I'm not saying that we pass over it, but we actually like it. Um, so that's the extent of my report. Are there, other than moving the Environment Management Task Force back on the list of action items, um, are there any other action items that you need to consider? I had a question um, because at one point we had an action item to review the pilot program on Beach Street, the parking enforcement, automated parking enforcement. Mm -hmm. I thought we were going to review that after the season. And I didn't go back and check other action item forms, but I, I thought it was on there. Or are we planning on including it in the discussion on November 4th on the parking policy? Just says resident parking stickers. So I actually thought we would do the um, stick review as part of um, the chief's quarterly report. Oh, okay. So it'll be part of the chief's quarterly report. Got that it. was my okay. thinking on that one. Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to know where it was. Sure. Please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other items or reactions? Okay. Um, Caitlin, come here. Are you, is she? she uh, yes, I think she's coming in. Yeah, she's uh, she's on Zoom. Yes, I'm present. Okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Could you start by just giving us a fairly short description of, of why you're, what your interest is in this committee and why you think it would be particularly good for it? Yes, so I've applied to um, be a, a participating member on the Town Welcoming Committee. And um, my experience with the Town Welcoming Committee actually um, happened the first time when I moved to the town last February. And um, I received a plate of cookies and a nice card welcoming to the town and with contact info and a nice letter saying that if you need any help, you'd like to be shown around. Um, we have people who are willing to do that. And I was very impressed also by, um, there's a, a paragraph in there about um, pairing students up with uh, like aged um, peers. And I thought that, that I've never lived in a town that's had a welcome committee. So I was impressed by that and I felt welcomed. Um, and I recently saw that they need volunteers to participate on the committee. They've had a few people decide they wanted to leave. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to uh, contribute and to get to know people in town. Uh, my background, I come from a teaching. I'm an educator, former educator, and um, I worked on a similar volunteer committee at school there um, called the Sunshine Committee. And we did things like welcoming new teachers, hosting events, taking collections for celebrations, um, things like that. Questions? Um, no questions, just a comment. It's nice to see someone who's going to be on both sides, you know, has come in and seen how it works. And then, so mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's good. Debbie, mm -hmm. yeah, how many programs do we have? There's three left. Three left. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to make the same comment as Jeff. I think it would it would be great to have someone on the committee who just went through the experience <laughs> of being welcomed, and certainly it's fresh in your mind what uh, what went well, and if there's any ideas that we have that we could do better. I, I think it'd be great. Mm -hmm. Seems well qualified. <laughs> John. Uh yeah, I th I, th I think my colleagues have said it all. Someone who's new in town, you re you really have uh, have experiences to as to what's working and what can be improved right now. And I think that's very, very important. So great. Thanks for raising your hand. Not one inch. Okay. Yeah, I can't add to that, you know, other than Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm 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 going to uh channel Becky. <laughs> oh, that was my job. <laughs> I'll channel Becky. Um, I'll get the next one. The former member of the of the select board always asks every volunteer, do you have enough time to do this work? Um are you currently working? Um is there anything that is on your schedule that might interfere? 
Not that I foresee. I work um, usually nine to five hours. I have a flexible schedule. Um, and after work, I just have commitments that I choose to commit to. So um, different classes and things like that. Um, so I do have the freedom and the leisure to participate and the time. Okay, let's see them. Do we have a motion? Yes, I would like to move to um, the select board and appoint Caitlin Pelletier to the welcoming committee for a term to expire on June 30th, 2027. Second. Discussion? Jeff? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Brian? Yes. And I say yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I hope you enjoy being on the committee and I hope it inspires you to get more involved with the town. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, Tyson Goodrich. No, not, not virtually. <laughs> I'm not very welcoming. <laughs> he was number five. <laughs> okay, well, we can put off. And we notify him again and, and, yeah. and put him on the next if, he, if, yep. if he's still interested. Yep. Ah, right. And now we have seven minutes or so before we're supposed to talk about the Cheddar House. Real zone fix. Yeah. Okay. Nothing? Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, we're just flying right through this up. <laughs> <laughs> Such an efficient uh, anybody, meeting. Anybody bring a deck of cards? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a couple of, of updates. Um, I did finally get back to the school committee. Um, they are they are doing um, the sorts of things that they often do in the fall, which is to review programs um, and and um, so that really is an area where the select board has very little to do and very little polish. Um, of some interest is that they are working on a new policy for their reserves. Um, they have reserves in a variety of forms. Um, I think they have spent down their old um, choice fund completely. And that's not renewed because the choice money that comes in from choice in students is spent in the year that it comes in. Um, but they have other forms of reserves. So they they decided to pick, actually they haven't decided. They're discussing whether they should have a range of they should measure, they know that they want to measure their reserves against their annual budget. And they're wondering whether they should have a range of percentages, you know, lower bound and upper bound, or whether they should have a target, a single target. And they're talking about keeping eight eight percent. Um and that will that we will continue to talk about that in future meetings. Um yeah, I think eight to ten is about well, the one of these. Um, that's um, there's um, some discussion that that um, they don't need as much because um, the towns also have reserves, but the school can spend its reserves on the vote of the school committee, um, whereas the town reserves would have to go through a town meeting. So if there were to be a crisis, it's it has there's some merit to their having money of their own to spend. And one of the crises mm -hmm. might be um, so that there's a failed budget and they go on a um, what they call a 12 twelfths, which is the mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, where they spend only a twelfth of what they spent the previous year um, each month and and depending on when it hits, it can be very awkward because you really don't have to make payroll every time. So sure. that's kind of where that is. Um, and that's really the only thing that they're working on. But 
I heard about that make would make any difference. Okay. Um, uh, the consent agenda. Does anyone, anything anyone wants to take out of the consent agenda? Is there a motion on the consent agenda? I move that the select board approve the consent agenda items. Second. Discussion. I have one question. I might ask that of Greg with regard to the consent agenda on on the vehicles for the Council on Aging. That leaves us with three vehicles, uh, Greg. That's correct. The, the two uh, mini buses, I guess to call them, and then the one van. Right. One of which is electric. The other two are regular gasoline yeah. powered. OK. All right. Correct. Just wanted to make sure what the count was. OK. Yeah. I have a question just for my own interest. Municipid, do they get they get a percentage of the auction? How much? How much? What are the auction fees? And how does that work? We typically have, have um, well, we've done both. We've done yeah. it on our own most of the time, but we have used the muni bid process as well. Um, not remembering their their cut. Um, it's usually a percentage. Right, it's a percent of yeah. the of the sale, and I'm I'm not remembering what that is offhand. Yeah. I can certainly get that for you. Yeah, it's not important. I was just curious. You know, I'm surprised. A hundred thousand miles is uh, is a full life <laughs> on a vehicle because both of those vehicles are around a hundred thousand miles. But um, I guess they're hard miles. Yeah, they're hard miles, and they um, yeah. sit, sitting out back here hasn't hasn't helped their life. Yeah, the rust is what. The, the rust is the problem. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The ten-year-old man's yeah, doing. fourteen. So it's yeah, yeah, it's about. And it's um, it's part of the um, replacement cycle that the state provides. So they we get um, eighty percent, the grant for eighty percent of the cost of a new van, beginning the cycle off hands five or six years or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Good. Interesting. That's a lot of miles for two years. Look, just basically in town driving, isn't it, for the most part? Yeah, yeah, for the most part. I mean, they do they do go to yeah. doctor appointments. So. But still, I mean, it's yeah. well, it's, 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 it's twenty thousand miles a year that the two vans are putting on, plus whatever we have on the other ones too. Yeah. Just look at them. So these things that they're used. <laughs> I know that there's a re renewed advisory about um, the electric ones in the salt water. If you're parking it out here, that, um, I guess in uh, Florida, the storm surge, when they come up on, there's something about car batteries and salt water. Yeah, it makes something about water, yeah. salt water, yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not I don't know if that's that right, but I think, yeah. 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 not to put salt water in anything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. for, for, for the record, your name and, and address. Oh, Dean Nahadis, 48th Street. Thank you. It's going to bode well for all the electric vehicles back back here. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, they're all close. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, we have not had a vote on the consent agenda. We ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Jeff. Yes. John. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Anne says yes. Yes. Brian says yes. All right. Now is um, eight six fifty, and the Charter House rental fee increase. Um, does anyone have comments on that? So again, the basic proposal here is to increase the fees of both the weekday and the weekend rate by fifty dollars from where they currently are, so that it would go to uh, three twenty-five for the weekday and three seventy-five for the weekend for residents, and then for non-residents, mm -hmm. um, the uh, non-residents. But we previously had raised it for non-residents, and it was staying. It's uh, seven fifty and eight fifty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And as the uh, it was mentioned at the uh, at the meeting, as Cheryl pointed out, revenues are down. Uh, means which they put out a house. So uh, I don't know if we're trying to balance things out or make it up in volume. <laughs> I, I'm first surprised that the revenues are down by a lot more than it would appear from the number of rentals. Mm -hmm. That must be weekday versus weekend. That's the only thing I can think of, but more non residents aren't renting it. Or... Well, it's mm. six versus eight. Now, in 22, they did have 19 non residents. But... Yeah, did, was there any discussion as to why? Well, they're they coming out of COVID, out. I think, was yeah. the big thing was that all of a sudden, people are finding other places to go. That's what I'm wondering. Is the now, competition there, 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 I mean, there's too much. I don't think there's a lot of hit. You know, there's <laughs> not a lot of data to support the, the speculation, but that was the first thing that came to mind. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you can see the drop from 22 to 23. You can attribute a lot of that to non-resident rentals. But from mm -hmm. 23 to 24, uh, you know, like Ann, I, I, I can't see where that, that, num that drop came from anywhere except weekday rentals are up and weekend rentals are down. I, I don't uh, see otherwise. That's... You know, we don't do anything to advertise or... Okay, so this is all word of mouth as far it's as non residents. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're not we're not promoting this right. one way or the other. Um, is there a reason why we haven't? Is it because we usually get enough, um, you know, interest to cover costs of maintaining it? Or no, I mean, so usually, um, usually the weekends are are, are pretty booked. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in the past, you know, there's been a line and people sort of pushing elbows to try to get to the front of the line yeah. so they get their first choice. That has waned. We, we haven't had been quite the lineup for, for getting on that calendar early as there used to be. So what, what um, kind of costs are we looking to cover? Um, so our, um, uh, I don't have it in, my, in front of me, but... Um, you know, Pux Point in general, all cost in, there's probably in the $50,000 range. Mm -hmm. um, Greg, this, this money goes into general revenues. There isn't a revolving account or some sort of a enterprise fund or anything. Is that correct? Correct. This is general fund revenue. Yep. Yeah, okay, fine. So it's, it's a little harder to assign dollars in and dollars out. It's just, okay. Yeah, I get, I think that's the reason for my question. I think so. Yeah, I was. So I, I could see where you were going. I mentioned somewhere. I saw somewhere about you know wanting to cover costs, but what are the costs? I don't. Um, I don't really see that. So this income line, that's after costs. No, no, no it's just this straight revenue. It's just straight revenue. Right. Yeah. So it's just you know how much do you associate with. The cost of tux to the chowder house versus rotunda, the beach, the restrooms, mm -hmm. you know, so that so I'm giving you the all in expense of, of tux point, yeah. Um, but not including every few years when we have to rebuild it, correct? <laughs> yeah, that's this is operating, not capital. Is there a particular rush to make this decision tonight? Um, I just was curious is um, if we're going to, you know, if the, there's been a decline in revenue, uh, it makes sense that one thing you look at is increasing the rate, um, but you may also want to do other things like, for example, promote it, um, advertise it, that also incurs costs. I'm just trying to get a handle on um, what the costs are that we're trying to cover and is that the right number? I'm looking at this, and I think that 2021 and 22, which are COVID and coming out of COVID, mm -hmm. okay, all the other numbers are consistent. Okay, mm -hmm. 23, 24, pretty much consistent with 16, 17. You know, they're all. Yeah. So as far as revenue, I agree yeah, with you. Um, as far as the, I mean, I don't know. Uh, as far as promoting it goes, uh, 
and I think being an outdoor venue during COVID I mean, coming out of it was uh, a popular place. popular place for the surrounding communities, but now they've got other options again. Right. I mean, maybe it's we do both here because of the family advertising. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to understand is, um, number one, is there a sense of urgency on making a decision tonight? Um, you could delay it another couple of weeks. Because I just would like to understand what costs we are trying to cover. Oper you said, you know, not the rebuilding, but what are the operational costs that we might be interested in? Because if you're going to raise it, you want to make sure you're you're covering the desired costs. And I wouldn't want to do that every year, you know. So you, I just you, feel like I need a little more info. But so you're thinking 50 is not enough? I don't know, oh. because I don't know what the costs are. So I, I, well, right. I think the so only I real costs associated with that would be the parking attendant. Uh, we don't have one. No, but they keep, there's someone up there. Okay. So we don't, yeah, we're not. Uh, I mean, so this. has been I mean, a few years since we've had a person actually checking cars, but we do have a person maintaining and cleaning and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, I would, I mean, there's got to be some maintenance right. on the bill. I just, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Usually, Maybe. before you set a price, you understand what your costs are. That's basic. Yeah. Right. We can have a um, presentation of that at your next meeting. Even, even a little memo. Well, I mean, just one second. Yeah. <laughs> probably. Greg. The, uh, John, do you have something? Yeah, I, I, I've got, I've got a question. I'm just looking at the trends here, the rentals, and that you know, they're blanks there from uh, 16, 17, 18, 19. I'm not sure. Maybe records weren't kept. But one thing I would like to know is we have a fixed inventory here. And I don't know how many spaces there are to rent versus what's going on. We may have reached the ceiling. You know, I mean, if our inventory is X and we're at 90% of X. Yeah, um, like I say, certainly weekend summers are pretty, you normally pretty booked. Yeah. Right. And I, I just don't know. I mean, was it like twice a day um, yeah, it's in general? A morning, a morning rental and an afternoon slash evening. No, no. So, on the, so on, the, on, the, on the weekends, you've got, uh, what, say, say, say you've got 20 weekends. And so that's uh, 20, 40, that's 80 slots. Mm -hmm. And then you've got uh, the weekdays. I, I would like to know something about, uh, you, you know, weekend rentals, what's going on there, and the weekday rentals so that we can see where we are with inventory relative to what's going on. We may be... Basic you know, utilization of the asset, right? Mm -hmm. Your asset utilization. Yeah. Operational costs to cover, that we're trying to cover, and and some rationale. I, I, I agree. The rationale for the new fees. I, I feel more comfortable with that. Suggest that we include the um, bathhouse. Oh, gee, by the beach, it ha it's essential right. to the to the use of the charter house. Oh, Ian, you had. Um, well, just a suggestion, um, maybe to solicit feedback from the renters mm -hmm. to see what what whether they felt it was worth it, the price or. <laughs> what some of the shortcomings were, whether they want uh, better kitchen facilities or better weatherproofing options or something like that, just to see, get a gauge for, you know, how to um, to see what, whether the price is reasonable for the demands. So, we will put this on next meeting's actions and try and get. Is that going to be enough time to get the information? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think it's time to. Greg. Sarah Otto. Sarah Otto. I missed the part about the staggered start. <laughs> so, oh, it's yeah. We just want to get here before you guys did so we'd all have company chairs. <laughs> 
so that I can create a form of teams inside. So I can stay with the MBA zoning because we're doing the final stuff too. Is that okay? Welcome. Thank you. That's convenient that you have a built in uh, app. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> supposed to be using this. <laughs> that doesn't look your room. What else you got? Yeah, <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if I could, I'll, I'll call our uh, finance committee meeting together uh, uh, tonight uh, with uh, Mary Creighton, Tom Parkins, Dean Hottis, and Andy Old. Thank you. Um, What are your FY26 priorities? Good question. We should ask that question first. Yeah. Well, I got there <laughs> while you were thinking about it. Well, I mean, I guess there's almost a perennial goal of somehow better getting a hold, a handle on uh, capital planning needs uh, and forecasting uh, five and 10 years look ahead. Um, we have that now, but, uh, you know, somehow it ends up being kind of fractured as we go through it, I'd say, uh, despite, you know, everybody's best efforts, I think. Um, so we've talked a bit about that uh, as a big picture item. Um, and then, you know, generally, you know, the focus is on, uh, you know, this the major budget items, mm -hmm. um, police, fire, DPW, and, uh, and the school. And, you know, we, uh, our focus this year with uh, the liaisons is um, actually kind of pairing people up on finance committee, uh, finance committee to meet with each of those uh, entities, or at least, you know, uh, yeah, so each of those just to, so that there's, um, a little better perspective that we can bring back at a meeting before we're about to meet with those those groups. Um, so big picture, I would say that's kind of tactically how we're looking at things. What are do you have in the um, one five year range for capital? That no, <laughs> no, I uh, I would say without a list in front of me, it's hard to okay. yeah. uh, extemporaneously list them out. Um, you know, all the favorites uh, Central Culver, the Culver. Uh, um, I know there's there's Pretty fast, I'm reasonably sure. Relocating the DPW, yes, yes, all that more. Um, continuing to work on pipes, yep, yep. Um, and, you know, as well as, you know, I think resiliency certainly um, enters into the conversation, um, particular in relation to the, the police department. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I know, I don't know, we kind of formally had a discussion, but uh, I've certainly wondered whether or not uh, the discussion of any sort of W facility ought to, you know, there might be some merit in trying to factor in uh, public safety. At the same time, uh, whether it's a common facility or shared site, somehow, uh, I think it's worth looking at those things. Uh, there could be some cost benefit in kind of combining those things rather than having them as separate, two separate projects. And the climate resilience of two weeks on the water treatment. Yeah. Yeah. The, the wastewater treatment. Greg, I thought we had funding for much of that. The resiliency of the wastewater treatment treatment. Um, so most of the funds are, are, are upgrading 
will be put in. Part of that upgrading will include um, elevating uh, electrical mm -hmm. uh, equipment and junction boxes, that sort of thing. Um, and some, I would say, short term bug proofing, okay. but not the not the long term. Mm -hmm real flood proofing of the plant. Um, that's probably a six to eight million dollar project as a standalone. If, if you want to keep the plant where it is and basically build a, a dike around it, mm -hmm. that's going to keep out the water. Um, so I think the, the shorter term Efforts are we'll be getting underway soon. It's still in design phase, but it'll be getting ready to go out the bid fairly soon um, this, this winter. Um, and you know, the hope is that that buys us, you know, 20 years time. Mm -hmm. And then you know what to do as we get closer to that 20 year mark. Um, <laughs> yeah. right. do, you know, are we do we decide to try to harden existing plant and, and put in that major dike, um, or do we think about relocating the plant? Neither neither option is inexpensive. Uh, relocating and building new plant is very expensive. Yeah, uh, but nonetheless, it's. That needs to be on the table. Mm -hmm. One of our challenges is, and, and Andy mentioned this, is the capital plan. You know, it it changes from year to year. And you asked about the five year plan and the ten year plan. And I we actually didn't ask about the ten year plan. I was very careful about that. <laughs> I know you. Um, but you know, because things happen, you know, I mean, you've got permitting issues with the state, and things just move, and. I think we find it very difficult to look at a capital plan over any more than a year sometimes because something gets delayed and carried over to the next year. And, and this is sort of a constant issue. And I think we found that the town's sweet spot is working at about 3.1, 3.2 million in capital a year. When you go beyond that, you know, this too many streets get dug up, too much equipment is moving, it's just hard. So how do you how do you do this three or four million a year and and make it continuous? And I think that's one of the things that we as finance committee have struggled with because it seems like each year we come up to annual meeting and it's like a snapshot. Okay, this is what we're going to do this year, but we didn't do this last year and we're hoping to do this next year. It's very hard to get sort of a multi-year run on it. I, I think we're trying to make more of an effort to really look at the five-year plan and see what, see how that affects obviously the tax rate debt analysis. So the real challenge there is with the bigger facilities because those yeah. have a the big big ticket items, and, yeah. and b that it, there's a lot of there's a lot of lead time from those. Um, you know, so so what we will be presenting in a couple of weeks that. Um, the five-year plus major facilities out to 20, I think it's 2045 or 50. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it will identify a, a new DPW garage, a new public safety facility, a new sewer plant, and a new school in that 30-year time frame. Another um, new school or just Essex? Essex. Oh, Essex. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, and I mean, that's, those are, like I say, those are big ticket items. Um, and so you're looking uh, at substantially new new bonds, mm -hmm. uh, new bonding to do that. Um, but I'm, I'm, we're hoping to show a, a progression that, that you, know, you, you need to make a political call as to whether or not that's palatable, but um, um, the, there's a big hit. Uh, meaning us within the six percent range of the tax increase um, in a couple of years, couple of three years for the elementary school in Essex plus APW plus PFAS. Mm -hmm. So those three um, require a big increase uh, to, to bond for those, and then and then as things 
come offline as we retire debt, as, as new construction, new tax base grows, you're able to take on the, the subsequent projects down the line. I, I think this is worthwhile in the discussions that have uh, you know, a sense of uh, willingness to recategorize and reprioritize certain things. Like uh, DPW, we've certainly been talking about for a while, and um, there's, there's lots of rationale for moving forward with that project, but in the context of all these other capital items that you just mentioned, Councilor, they, however, aged and decrepit it may be, they do have facilities and there could be a lesser project that could happen in their current location yeah. to, to bridge a gap. Um, or a less expensive project in a new location. We don't have to do traditional brick and mortar the way we've done traditional brick and mortar. There's lots of new options for facilities that we yeah. haven't really looked at in detail yet. You could, yeah, right. I mean, uh, a garage is a different spec than right. than an office. Exactly. Yeah, and that, so, uh, there's there's some merit to having people who run the business at the business. So, some office is probably. Well, I think the DPW. Absolutely. Is you you can build out an office space inside a steel building. Exactly. You know, yeah. He has a public so, building. Lots of towns, yeah. Carlisle, Chelmsford, have all done. Fire stations and other things, and yeah. using very different approaches. It's, um, it's worthwhile yeah. making sure we do that due diligence because everything doesn't have to cost twenty five million dollars. Um, um, I'm uh, interested in seeing what you know. I like that, Aaron. I'm, I'm willing to stop thinking about a, just a municipal center. Yeah. All right. Uh, I thought that's a town hall. Oh, uh, few more. Uh, <laughs> if we put, uh, you know. As you say, public safety and DPW together. On a, on a, but we got to find a site that's uh, is the uh, dumb site big enough. As, you know, that, Silver Star Stable. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, but these are things that I think that uh, if we start thinking in that direction, as opposed to you know, it's bifurcating. This has to be here and it has to be there. I'm willing to start thinking about uh, maybe mm -hmm. it makes some sense. I also think we got to really push hard on on requirements. Because right now it's kind of a wish list, and, and I haven't seen the evidence of. I, I don't just have we haven't gone down to that level of detail. Mm -hmm. How much space do we need versus what we want versus what we have now? Usually, the first uh, request is a lot larger than what we have, and you really get a push yeah. hard on that. And I just don't see the evidence that that work has been done yet. No, which is very important in some of these projects. Well, oftentimes yeah. it'll happen when you when you hire the, the designers. You know, or ask them that. True, but if you're taking a different approach and doing something more, you know, prefab or some other building technique, you got to get into the requirements even before you pick the the um, approach or pick the partner, the supplier partner, because you may. Maybe a completely different set of people you'd be evaluating, a uh, completely different set of companies you'd be evaluating. So you really want to have a good feel for, especially in a very mobile department like the DPW. Yes, they're going to, there's going to be some administrative space needed, but not nearly as as much as people who are sitting at desks all day long, right? So um, you know, it's a very different environment when you're dealing with a high degree of mobility. Yeah, you could you could pursue it as a design build. Project with the contractor that hires the design firm and you know, keep the keep the budget tight that way. Also, I mean, you know, and I think you're I think the the direction you're talking about the idea that we're not necessarily trying to build something like like Hamilton built for their impact police and fire right. Uh, this well, is a, or or <laughs> this is the building that's going to be out of sight probably up on a hill and doesn't necessarily. Demand the same kind of aesthetic Aesthetics. concern. Right. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, and just sort of going up another that, right. five thousand feet. We oftentimes look at capital lists, and and we're not sure what makes good financial sense, what the political tea leaves say. You know, and things move around. And I think some guidance from you folks and. Um, 
<laughs> our collective best guessing as to, okay, DPW, sewage treatment plant, road, Central Street, mm -hmm. and what, what order should these things fall into? Because <clears throat> there's the political component, there's the financial component, there's the construction component, there's the scheduling component, all these kind of people. Mm -hmm. But I think it kind of begins with what are the people of the town willing to sign up for to start with? And that's why you all get paid the big dollars. <laughs> you know, it kind of begins there with a you know a, a wish list, and then we can there's attack there's also, it. Yeah. There's also the you know we have a health issue with the PFAS. Yep, and that gives that a big boost. Yeah, yep, as it should. But I think you know. Mark brings up a good point. You know, Greg, if you're going to show us something in a couple of weeks, right? You're saying focused on capital, right? It is our role to try and prioritize that. Okay, and first pass. Okay, um, and and then next, I, I think it's we talked about this before. It's really important to finish capital planning around those big rocks for the for the year before we start having discussions on the pennies mm -hmm. <laughs> after the fact, right? Um, so if we do nothing else different this year, I'd really like to do that. But secondly, you know, in the private sector, when you're dealing with the kind of huge capital expenses that we're projecting, um, the other thing that's done is really looking hard at stopping or slowing down things that are not priorities. Okay, and that's where that operational review, Greg, I think should help us. And I, I apologize, I forgot the timeline on that. No. Um, it should be between now and you know, February. Okay. So I, I think that's a really important input to see, to get some outside eyes on what we could, should do differently to, you, you wanna minimize your operational costs, free up money for these big capital items. That to me is what we should be also focusing on um, these are difficult discussions, but they're often necessary to avoid sticker shock to the mm -hmm. residents, you know. Well, I think some of these things are going to bulldoze their way to the front, though, too. That's if, a, well, like yeah. this Essex Elementary, if the MSBA is involved, and that's a go, that's mm -hmm. going to push a lot of stuff aside. We have to also, yeah. what's the next PJS? Well, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I'm in agreement with the, the Essex DPW and the PFAS being the three big drivers, but um, I'd also like to mention athletic fields still in there because I think, you know, Pine Street Field didn't really fill the void we were looking to. And I think Sweeney Park is still, you know, something we really need to try to figure out. Um, and then um, some interim, rather than, I know, 30 year plans for new um, public facilities, but in the interim, it would be nice if we didn't have to go through a drill every time we had a flood tide with like the police station, the fire station. So maybe some interim repairs to pre prevent that type of thing. I don't know uh, if we could put like a wall around the boiler in the fire room so that that doesn't flood out, which would be a critical. Um, if we can, Put lightweight fill for four feet in the town hall lot and raise the the boat ramp. You know those with retaining wall at the at the garage. Some something interim that we're not going through like fire drill every time we get a flood tide. Um, I'd like FY twenty six to look at that. The uh, as far as Sweeney. Yes. Uh, um, Brian is our liaison to the. It sounds so much better when you say liaison. I said it means they are they are uh, looking at it right now. Have some kind of report, but uh, the question is a big thing is is it dirt field or natural grass for Sweeney, for Sweeney? And if it's natural grass, I believe CP C funds can uh, mm -hmm. be used towards that. Uh, but then there's also the drainage issue. There's a lot of things going on, which they're starting to study that now. Uh, and this is going to be blasphemous. I wouldn't, I, I don't, I don't put playing fields in the top of the list right now. Uh, 
you know, we've got to buy this uh, and be creative, but uh, there's some other things that are more pressing than the, the fields, in my opinion, my humble opinion. The senior center is another one. I think you said it's moving right along. <laughs> and, and I think the goal is that much of the senior center will be paid for outside of the tax rate. Correct. The idea is to, is to do fundraising for the renovation addition that would be planned for that building. So the renovation, furnishing, yes. all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Private sector. Even, even, even a, uh, raise money for an endowment for the operation. Mm -hmm. Depending how successful the, the fundraising can be. Mm -hmm. So, well, you check books. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might want to put a firewall between what the private funding is for the senior center versus what it is for town hall office space. Um, I don't know if you want to do a fund drive for, for that, but. Oh, for, for moving the council on it? Yeah, yeah, right. some of that. We might want to be careful about that. I just said it. I think it's kind of a little detail point. This is really more for Greg and Andrea, but I feel like with, as we go through all these budget meetings and trying to get the revenue onto the same page as the expenses would be very helpful. Um, oftentimes, you know, things like parks and rec, we've got revenue over here and we've got expenses over here. Harvard is another example where <clears throat> revenue comes in and we're sort of always hopping back and forth trying to figure out where the revenue is. And, and it sounds like a detail, but when you get down to looking at lots and lots and lots of budgets and you're trying to figure out, should we peel a little back on this or should we amplify a little of that, knowing what the revenue and the expenses is really helpful. To give a really small example, parking, um, Meter maids. Yes. Um, they show up in the police salaries, and the revenue that they cut bring in shows up someplace completely different. Yeah, and and it's yes. easy to say, well, we can just save a little bit here by not enforcing our parking laws. Right. I know it's a detail, but it <clears throat> it saves a ton of time if we could. Yeah. Um, if, if I may add something here, I look at all of these projects and most of them have been on the table with varying timelines for a, a couple of years now. And I know that every six months you look at it and say OTPW is in the lead. And then six months later, it looks like PFAS is where we're going to have to spend money. I think that if you model this, no matter which project, and the school obviously is a factor there, you're going to have to borrow money. At, at maybe a very similar rate, regardless of which project seems to be the lead horse in the race from one year to the next. I, I can appreciate the finance committee saying, you know, it's a moving target. I'm not saying the goalposts necessarily move, but the color of the goalposts seem to move. <laughs> so um, trying to plan for this, maybe, maybe you look at modeling this several different ways with different projects at, you know, coming along at different rates and you still wind up in the same place, money-wise, or very close. And that's the big challenge. Yeah, well, one of the things, when your debt service starts to increase, you want to look at really controlling operating costs. I think that's a uh, big, so that, you know, we do know that our debt service is going to go up. So we really have to be mindful of the operating costs. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think Maury said, yeah, three million bucks is what we spend each year for basic capital improvement activities that, well, for lack of an, another descriptive term, affect our lifestyle because some street is dug up somewhere. <laughs> and um, that's probably a number. We've been working with that, I guess, for now, I don't know, five or six years. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems that that is going to continue to go unless we need to look to take some of that money to put it to some of the bigger projects, but the pipes are like forever. Lots of pipes, lots of pavement, yes. Lots of pipes, lots of pavement, yes. Like with bridges. As soon as we're done, we got to start all over again. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's it's just a fixed it's a fixed fixed cost there in the budget. 
Thank you. Thank you. What are the costs to the town of the Calvert project? So, um, so those monies have been appropriated. Mm -hmm. um, which, well, seven hundred fifty thousand um, for a round numbers of six six million dollar project. So, the, so uh, that that is right now sort of in the cogs moving along. Yes. So yes. That, that one's going to happen. So that at, we, at a known time. We should break ground on that project a year from from now. Mm -hmm. I'm seriously mean that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that money's been appropriated. Yeah, the town funds are right. there. So that's the, not even on the list the, anymore, right? The federal grants are the, yeah. no, that's not on the list. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, that's well, we're just Box that right off the list. And that's, yeah. We're getting something accomplished today. Yeah. Does anyone have anything further? You know. and, and this, I mean, we are just starting. Yeah, yeah. I so I, I just I think as a as a maybe a, a process, um, this kind of discussion is very helpful. I think it would be even would be more helpful even if we keep this level of discussion going um, because I don't know the, we um, it feels like when we have further discussions within you know as part of our finance committee meetings they feel like they're in a bit of a vacuum because mm -hmm. they're they're not in the context of priorities that, that the select board might be tracking um, so I think it would be good to check in maybe once or twice through the, the budgeting process this year. I don't know. What, I think we'd be completely with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it could very well be, um, you know, because I know a lot of times one or two of you will sit into our meetings, and as long as you can represent what your current priorities are in those items, you know, that, that could do the trick. Well, I think it's important to your point. If we're going to be really focusing, though, on capital first, right? Yeah. When we're done with that, we should all, it, there should be a joint meeting on just that. Okay. Yeah. What did we learn through that process? What do we think we want to put forward? And ideally, we could mature our process enough so that we set operational targets, right? That we believe will be affordable to the residents. Um, you know, we so it's nice to work from the bottom up, okay? Yeah. But I wish we could do a little bit more top of a top down look, right? Because if something's going to be a very expensive, you know, capital year, right? Maybe we need more than the three million. Um, to Dean's point, we, we've got to put some pressure on the operational costs, and it would be nice to be able to set some targets for the for the for town hall and say, look, what would it look like if you're operational budget was this, okay? And we, and we give them a target. And it's, it's, it's a good way of getting people to think differently about what is really a want versus um, a need. Yeah. And, and I just would like to see us do a little more setting targets, at least so we can get a draft of what it might look like. I mean, you might think it's ugly and no, we don't like that, but we we, we don't look at it, you know? So anyway, yeah. that would be my wishes. Yeah. Yeah. I was Sorry. just gonna say, if you had a timeline and said, okay, PFAS, we're gonna try and deal with in the next three years. DPW move potentially year two to year four, you kind of sequence that out like a pro forma schedule or a strong man schedule. Then, then you can look at it and say, okay, how much capital do we need and what's the impact on the taxpayer? Right. And so um, that's what we'll show you. Now you start to really say, all right, here's, and then you can look at it from the point of view of what's the spend rate, what's the staffing needed, what's the impact on community. You can look at it from different angles, but you got to start with planning. Yeah. Right, is that the sixteenth? Rocks. Is the 16th we're going to be doing that. I'm sorry. We're going to be doing that on the sixteenth. Is that that? Really? Yes. Do we anticipate any breakthroughs in the housing development? In the, you know, 
I know we've been stockpiling money in the CPC for something to happen as far as um and and and, and the affordable housing board or something, but it, it, that might that might come out of nowhere and be a priority, you know, to blindside us as well. So just watching that. Sorry, Greg, I just want to clarify this meeting where you're going to be presenting all this capital, um, these capital items, is that at the October 16th FinCon meeting? Right. Okay, so there's nothing planned to be presented at an upcoming select board meeting. Yeah, I get, on the 21st. And you the, need to get the 21st, okay, so yeah. first cut it at the um, 16th and then we be showing us something and we're similar on the 21st. Okay. I do hope it's more than just similar. Yes. It makes some are, good uh, ideas and changes. Right. And, yeah, yeah. I'm planning the changes. <laughs> That's why I use the word similar. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, this has been productive and interesting and valuable. Um, this, is there anything further we need to do right now, or um, can we wait a month and a half and come together again? Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot of information is going to come out on the 16th. So yeah, yeah. Right. we're kind of waiting for that. Yeah. So soon we have the time. Hmm. I'm just special time. Well, the, the 16th is 16th of October, right. 21st of October. Right. But, 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 but to... our, our getting together again okay, right. will be after this 18th of November. Because um, there's sort of a focus on the town meeting that yes, of course. Yes. tends to distract the select board. Yeah. And I think that timing would make a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. I have a Strong personal desire to be in the other room. <laughs> so, <laughs> if if we're we're done, um, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, and, uh, we will be with the between the liaisons and and and, and, and our future meetings. Yeah. Um, we're going to be chatting. Great. Thank you. Second, so so move second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, special time meeting articles. So, as I know them, we never to you. Um, I guess the the. the the main show is the uh, MBTA 3A zoning proposals that are being finalized uh, kind of all that we need here. Um, additionally, uh, I listed possibilities for some additional articles. Um, <clears throat> first one being stormwater regulations. Uh, we, we, we are under some pressure from EPA to update our stormwater regulations. We did this. Uh, I say a few years ago, following uh, DEP guidelines, um, those guidelines were, were not as uh, complete in EPA's eyes as uh, they should have been in their eyes. And so they are asking communities to, to revisit, revisit them. Um, so, like I say, we're, we're under uh, pressure from EPA to be doing this. Um, they wanted us to do it last spring. We, we begged for a little more time. They said, okay, do it in the fall. Uh, so that's why it's potentially before us here. Um, so that's one. Uh, the second one uh, is the potential land conservation deal that Essex County Greenbelt uh, is pursuing. You heard um, information on that at your last meeting. Uh, the CPC has since uh, approved that project, is, is recommending it. It'll go before the voters. Mm -hmm. um, and again, from Greenbelt's perspective, they would much prefer to have that vote uh, before the end of this calendar year. Um, and so that's why it potentially is on the docket as well. <clears throat> A third 
uh, need? Um, could this could this one be put off to the spring? Probably could. We, we have an unpaid bill from last fiscal year um, for some consulting work that was related to the 40B appeal. Um, some invoicing that that got lost uh, between different uh, folks here. Uh, and so uh, because the fiscal year is closed and because we don't have uh, enough dollars remaining in, in the attempt that we had set aside for this, um, it requires a, a special vote. Um, and that is a, a nine tenths majority vote at, uh, at town meeting. Uh, for slightly under ten thousand uh, dollars, which uh, come out of our, our fund balance, our free cash account. Just out of curiosity, what happens if the voters did not approve that? Yeah, we're, we're in a bind. We can't pay it, um, and the vendor could sue us, and then we go through a process of trying to get that resolved. And a question if it's on the special, if it's on the regular town meeting in April, does it become a budget item for the subsequent budget year? And that doesn't require nine tenths? No, it would still, because it's a previous year obligation, it still requires the nine tenths. So it would be basically a supplement to this current year's budget, but requiring that nine tenths vote. So basically, we hard. vote to approve it or we wind up getting sued. Yes. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. We've done that once recently. Yeah. Right. I, you know, I try to avoid it. Just, you know, I, I don't yeah. like these at all. Um, I just you know, think it's around the top of our game. We don't have any unpaid bills. Um, this literally got stuck in a, in a committee members folder and, oh. and uh, it didn't come across our okay. desk. So uh, sometimes it happens. And this is one of those times. Mm -hmm. yeah, luckily, it doesn't happen very often for us. Uh, we try to avoid it. <laughs> and then uh, whether or not there's any citizen petitions or not, uh, we have another uh, oh. week or so. Oh, it's uh, 28 days prior. 28. Yes, is the deadline. Okay. Any word about, is there something to make it up? Yeah, I have not heard recently what there is. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm not sure. You had, you had mentioned yeah. earlier um, a change to restrict the use of ADUs as... Um, well, that's right. I'm sorry, I, I did mention that. We talked about that a little bit at the last time. Um, so, yeah, so that is the potential for that. We would, um, uh, as, a, as a template, I, I mentioned Gloss's new ordinance, which I think um, you would find interesting and, and applicable here as yeah. well. Could you, could um, you send that? Yeah, let me circulate that around to all. I meant, I meant to do that and, last and, week, and, and, and I didn't. I would like short-term rentals, is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, yeah short-term short rentals. So this is, um, because of the that. new ADU law yeah. that's going to come into play from February, um, yeah. folks have talked about, should we beef up our short-term rental yes. yeah. ordinance to prevent those ADUs just becoming short-term rental uh, units mm -hmm. and really not helping our housing mm -hmm. <laughs> problem. Right. And, um, and, and I would put in the caveat that somebody would have to start in February, build an ADU and use it as an Airbnb before our April town meeting. Um, yeah, you, you've got a very short window there. Um, you don't have a lot of exposure. Yeah. Um, but I think we should see what the. Yeah, let's take a look at it and you can decide okay. um, if, if we should add it to this, to this go down. Um, so, um, you know, if we have four or five items besides the main attraction, you know, I'm, I'm assuming the main attraction is, you know, a couple of hours of debate and discussion. Uh, before a vote is made, and then you know, these other ones, 90 minutes worth of, of additional effort and discussion, I would... Whether we put them first? Right. You might so try to get them first, get them out of the way. I would, 
that would be my recommendation. I think it's I think it's doable. Um, I, you know, I think someone's going to call the question after two hours. <laughs> so, um, so you know, three and a half hour meeting. You know, even that's even that even if that stretched to four hours, that's not unreasonable. So, it seems like we could we can manage this, this list. So, subject to seeing the roster of eighty million, um, we agree that, that these are things that. Get them out of the way, it'll make the spring meeting shorter, too. <laughs> there'll, there'll be something uh, new there, too, That's but yes. <laughs> yeah. um, you can always help. You can always help. Um, yeah. Do we have that entirely? Okay. We, we sit, we've all read Bion's letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the questions that we have are not so much about how often we meet, but whether we'll be able to. Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. Okay. Uh, a few items here. Um, just a follow up. You, know, you had your discussion with, with Kate about the potential of, of having them do some um, complementary service um, aimed at, at seniors in particular. Um, you asked me to just reach out to our, some of our neighboring communities and they all felt that the service was um, was doing well in their particular community. They, they gave they a pretty high marks for the services um, that they're receiving. Um, so the process for joining is, has been streamlined. It's just your decision. You can make that vote. Um, but if you wanted to reverse it, it still requires a town meeting vote. Um, so it's a little more complicated to get out than it is to get in. Um, but it is reversible you know, if, if that is something that you feel is, would be necessary. I mean, I, I'm in favor of moving yeah. forward with that. I think we um, heard everything we wanted to hear and be helpful to our residents. Even if we don't want to use yeah. it for downside, there's still the number. Right. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> just redirect really <laughs> Yeah. No. Still, still, still would like to see how how demand is for uh, offering a service later on in the day. Later on in the day, because all of these services end at three, and Cato will not change on that. But right. so we, we, we but to, we can. We can. Yes. We can. Yeah, we could adjust our schedule. Or, right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, I think that's a possibility for sure. Let's do it. Okay, we'll, we'll keep working on that. Um, just a, a quick follow up on, on again the lead survey EPA. It's a mandate from, from them. Um, they, they loosened up some of the requirements the other day. We got some good news that uh, some of the penalties don't kick in until 27, I believe it is. Um, really. how, how much? How many? What's the response rate they're looking for before we get penalized? Or <laughs> well, ultimately, so if we don't have a response. They're going to assume it has lead. Okay. So it behooves us to prove as many as possible. Okay. Um, ultimately, we will we will get that proof when we're doing the meter Meters. replacements. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a deadline in mid October of giving EPA our initial response. Uh, mid October next year. No, this year. No. Mid October now. So That's another, what I'm saying. Yeah. Couple of weeks Sucks. here by deadline. Yeah. Chuck's heard from like, I don't know, 200, 250 people. He's got to hear from like 1,600. So he's way short. But as as uh, Greg says, he's banking on the fact that as we grind through these meters, we'll have hands-on information on everybody. We're just not going to get people to respond to this survey. We're not going to have that hands-on information in a week. So We're not. We're not. We're not right. going to have it. We're not going to have it. But uh, so things go back and forth. Like <laughs> is he able to use the date of the building creation in order right. to so that, answer that's, that question? Yes, you can use yeah. that. Um, so we will have a higher number of, of potential um, homes with lead. Mm -hmm. And as we, so, so that number will be established. And then as we confirm when we're in the, 
to doing the meters, number that number okay. will drop significantly. Okay. Yeah. We have, like I say, a couple of years before we have to start taking action. Okay. Um, so it it's it's going to work its way through. <laughs> it's um, it's just not as streamlined as as efficient as it could have been. So that's where we are. Okay. Um, they, they will. Uh, I think they're putting out a communication to as many folks as they can in the next week or so to try to get a few more responses. Well, that's where that is. Um, uh, this morning, uh, Kathy and John were able to join the, uh, on the Zoom call with the recruiting firm. Um, we, the three of us haven't talked since we had that conversation, but I thought um, it was a good a good conversation with the firm. Uh, we certainly uh, certainly know what they're doing and um, have established themselves as the lead recruiting firm in the, in the state at this point. They've um, they've done about what was it sixty percent of the recruiting efforts in the last five years, mm. um, and they've uh, established a good database and they know a lot of know a lot of people. <laughs> Yep. So, I don't know if Kathy or John, you want to yeah, share yeah. any more? No, with I, they were, I can't think of a deficit. I mean, I think they, they know their stuff. Yeah. They're past town administrators and managers themselves. Lots of different types of towns that they've worked in personally. Um, so, I, I, I the presentation was very, very good. They're, they're yeah. qualified. They, they did give us a, a, a proposal at this point in terms of how things would work and uh, the proposal was impressive. And they did say it'll probably be a challenging uh, search for us and for them because it's a very competitive market right now. And our geography doesn't help us because they look for a radius of say a commuting time of 45 minutes around you. And of course, half of the distance around us is in the water. So we've got that fewer uh, towns to uh, geography to pull from. So they said it, it'll be a challenge, but uh, they certainly seem like they're up up to the task. There's no question. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to make that formal at the next meeting. Then. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're more than qualified and happy with, would be happy to work. Yeah, I think yep. I think that would be really great if you had a chance to. Oh, did I send out the proposal to everybody? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, let, I think we need do to that. see the actual <laughs> proposal. Yeah. yeah let, let, me get, let me get the rest of you those, yeah. that provide time. I meant to, I meant to do that. Um, yep. And you can you can read it over if you have any questions. So either ask me or, or Kathy and John. Um, so that we'll get that moving forward. Um, mentioned some um, meetings at the end of this week related to the next round of uh, climate resiliency impact work with Harvard. Um, if one of you had a chance to attend one or both, um, just let me know. Um, and that'll be this Thursday and Friday at, at 11.45. Um, it's at the uh, uh, St. John's in Gloucester on Middle Street. So I, I can get to, I'll get you the address. Um, and then lastly, uh, not on, didn't make it in my memo, but um, the celebration for Ron Gaspar Giacomo's life and, and contributions to the town, um, aiming for October 25th. Um, and they're just trying to get a preliminary uh, cut So if you could let me know if you think that works for your schedule that afternoon, um, next day or so, they're just I'm trying to get them ahead of time. Yes. So. I do. Any excuse if you work out of hard work or on Friday? <laughs> uh, and that's all I have for you tonight. Yeah. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. This is very efficient. Board. John. Yes. 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 Yes.
We had, uh, I got an email. He's not. He wants to be on the 